through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 161. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of Rock of Ages this Friday, we're mm -hmm. talking about Tom Cruise, mm -hmm. one of the biggest actors of the modern times. Mm -hmm. Who is being surprisingly really kept hush-hush in the trailers and previews for Rock of Ages. They've really, they kept him even being in the movie pretty under wraps for a lot of months. I think the first trailer came out and he was like in the last two seconds of the trailer yeah. or something. It it's looks to be an interesting project. Curious about it. We'll see. Yeah, it looks but weird. he's been doing important stuff oh for my God, three yeah. decades plus now. Yeah. The first really significant role that we wanted to talk about yeah, was... That you have to talk about. That you have to talk about. Risky Business. Mm -hmm. This is the one from Paul Brickman who sadly really hasn't done anything else really? i don't know why that is but this is a story of a high schooler who's on the verge of graduating going to college who mm -hmm. throws a party stuff gets destroyed mm -hmm. ends up having to basically create a brothel to mm -hmm. raise some money you know That's a good way to raise money yeah. i've heard learn some life i've heard <laughs> <laughs> learn some life lessons along the way and grow like as a, a person that's an important life lesson. I wish I had learned. He should write a book when he grows up. It should yeah. be Risky Business 2. Still risky? Yes. <laughs> Even riskier. Yeah. Well, this is right before AIDS began, so yeah, it probably totally. would have been very risky back then. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, this is such... <laughs> the name has a hush, so much darker turn now. <laughs> this is such a, such a great film. I mean, yeah. it's the relationship, you know, between Tom Cruise and Rebecca De Mornay, who mm -hmm. plays a... Call girl, <laughs> lady of the night. Yes, is a really interesting love story. Really kind of kooky. Yeah, and just just him growing as a an, as an adult and learning to say, you know, sometimes you just gotta say what the fuck mm -hmm. is one of the funniest scenes in like all of film. Like, I think this is sort of when he turned from you know side character, fun actor to. Like, smooth guy. Yeah. When he says, sometimes you gotta say, what the fuck, is, mm -hmm. like, one of the best, like, individual cool scenes. Whips out Tom Cruise. Number, yeah. Smile number yeah. 17. Yeah. Just exactly. Yeah, I don't know if you want to call that Blue Steel or whatever, but <laughs> it's it phenomenal. And, I mean, he was nominated for Golden Globe for the film. The film was nominated for a Writer's Guild hmm. for the writing. Paul Brickman, good on you for that as well. I just, I, I love the film. I... I think this is one of those ones that really holds up pretty well mm -hmm. despite time. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also one of those movies that, like, all most people remember about it is that, you know, one famous scene of him dancing, which is funny because mm -hmm. I bet you most people who yeah. knew that scene wouldn't couldn't tell you what the movie was about. Yep. And the, the train, sex well, times, good times. Yeah, but that, you know, car, car getting destroyed, <laughs> good too. Lots of other things. Other things funny Spencer's is. Spencer's seen Risky Business a lot. <laughs> other funny thing is his friends. Bronson Pinchot. Oh, yeah, that's and right. And Curtis Armstrong, better known as Booger mm -hmm. from Revenge of the Nerds. Mm -hmm. what? I think this is before Revenge of the Nerds, isn't it? It's got to be right around the yeah, same time. Yeah. It is crazy to think about those being two of his major friends this film because <laughs> yeah. what a weird group of people. <laughs> Definitely diverging careers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, that's so sad, too, to think of those three and just watch. Funny how that worked out for them. <laughs> I guess Bronson Pinchot is the Bronson Pinchot project. Yeah. Can't really say much for Curtis Armstrong. I think Curtis Armstrong probably had more of a career for him going in the next ten years than Bronson Pinchot. But I forget when Perfect Strangers. Was that was late eighties, I believe. Okay, yeah. So Bronson Pinchot blew up. Anyway, we're gonna move on to another classic Tom Cruise because mm -hmm. there are so many classic ones. Yeah. yeah. Actually, one of my favorites, probably in a very strange way. I don't mm. know. Probably, probably I'm not alone in that. I, but, you're alone in this, in between <laughs> the two of us. <laughs> I'm talking about 1986's Top Gun. Mm -hmm. This is the fighter pilot film that has been infamously sort of panned for being like latently gay. Oh yeah, have you seen the Quentin Tarantino that clip? I don't. I think it's from some short or some movie. Just. YouTube Quentin Tarantino Top Gun explanation and it's this he's in a party talking to someone and it's clearly from something but I forget what and he's explaining the homoerotic subtext below Top Gun. Is it four rooms or something? It's not actually in oh maybe I, no, I don't think it's in four rooms but it's I, I either way uh, I forget what it's from but yes he talks about the whole Top Gun latent homosexuality including the fact that Iceman and Maverick's final lines the movie and each other is 
I'll watch your back. You know, I got your back anytime. I got yours. You know. To be like fair, that. it's a very male-oriented world. You know. I mean, it's like the only lady love interest dresses like a man, and that's when she becomes sexy when she dresses like a male fighter pilot. The whole volleyball scene. I I just I think it's. Uh, like the relationship, it was the I, 80s. I'm a big fan. Tom well, Cruise. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's just a lot of evidence yeah. against you in this one. Too. I, I, don't, I don't even care about that. Who cares? I mean, if even if they were gay, let them, let them be proud about that. I mean, I just famous I, Kenny Loggins music. I, that's I, not for the gay. That's just for the actual part of the movie. That's Kenny gay. Loggins was fantastic. Yeah. Don't don't hate on Kenny Loggins. But Goose, I love Goose. Goose's relationship True. with Maverick. Anthony is, Edwards. That death scene is one of the most oh, tragic oh, ones yeah. when Goose dies. Oh yeah. Like that that. That'll break you up. Mm -hmm. Especially and when you imagine that was his lover. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to keep bringing that up. Sorry. I'll stop. No, it's, <laughs> fair. it's fair. It's fair. It's just, it's, it's such a, a fun movie, mm -hmm. ultimately. I mean, you know, the the sort of dynamic of a guy who is a rebel yeah. who really does things his own way mm -hmm. and ultimately has to sort of learn to work as a team member yeah. as a classic story mm -hmm. and you know it's unwanted responsibility yeah and it's sort of interesting to sort of see that perspective of you know military combat because he's put into a war situation mm -hmm. as a fire pilot and it really is sort of a tense moment yeah. at the end and i th i think it's really he does an amazing job in terms of acting. You know, yeah. Tom Cruise doesn't get a lot of credit for That's true. acting, and this is sort of one of the first instances where his yeah, performance actually... really was important because there's death, there's love, mm -hmm. there's uh, karaoke. <laughs> it's Volleyball. not karaoke, to be fair. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but you know, I, I wonder if actually like all like Navy pilots or whatever know that so. they probably have to. At this point, they probably. I also do. think it's interesting to realize that like now I I obviously haven't double checked this to see how absolutely wrong I am with this, but I wonder how many movies outside of what like the Iron Eagle series dealt with fighter jets as their like and jet fighter jet pilots as their main. I feel like horse subject. I feel I, like you can't really do much with that. I feel like there's probably at least a handful. I mean, top or is it Hot Shots? Yeah, but parody. That's kind of parodying Top Gun, so yeah. I don't think that really counts. Like I'm talking about, like, like what you've got, like the Iron Eagle movies, which were in the same time frame, and then you've got what Stealth. Yep. In the 2000s. That's true. There's got pretty be much. More. There's got to be something. Else. I bet there. I bet Please there are more. Email us and tell us. Because Greg really wants to watch Fighter Pilot. Movies. No, I'm just. I just think it's interesting to. Cause, he like, really has a top closet. Gun, Top Gun fan. <laughs> no. I'm just curious because, you know, that seems like such a weird su subject that they, and they did everything that they could do in Top Gun. They did the training, they did the wartime, they did, you know, crazy dog fights, they did someone dying and injecting into ocean. I mean, what else can you really have other than a full blown war where people are using fighter jets, which would be boring? Uh, a robot controlled plane, aka stealth. <sighs> Boom. Uh, your argument is just crumbling before your eyes. No, because. Before your eyes. What else could they do interesting? <laughs> that was fascinating. <laughs> okay, what else? Could, no, Did you not see it had Jessica Biel and Jamie Foxx? I was gonna say what else could they could do well, but Lucas. I don't like Top Gun and I don't like Stealth, so I guess that argument is more what else could they do badly with fighter pilots? Maybe you need to rewatch those Iron Eagle films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, just probably throw, not. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> oh, an Airwolf that had a helicopter. A helicopter pretty... does it count. Totally count. different. Totally counts. No, it doesn't. No, we're talking about jet dog fights. Totally counts. Uh. Anyway, he moved on. Tom Cruise, this is. Thankfully. Moved on to another series, or mm -hmm. not series, another significant film, also with Tony Scott. Yes. Days of Thunder. Mm -hmm. At this point, he had been nominated for Best Actor for his work mm -hmm. in Born on the Fourth of July. Ah, uh, yes, that's Which right. is really kind of a crazy film. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kind of hard to watch. Kind of hard to watch. But, uh, again, I picked this one because I love Days of Thunder. <laughs> yes, really awesome do. film. Another <laughs> sort of romantic movie, much mm -hmm. like Top Gun, about a race car driver who is sort of a rebel mm -hmm. who ultimately you know learns to work as a team interesting Funny. interestingly enough uh prob you know probably the best nascar movie and also and interestingly enough a nascar movie before nascar was what we imagine oh as totally today. totally uh i mean i definitely prefer it over was it talladega Nights, oh, yeah. yeah which interestingly enough has john c Riley in it who is also in Days of Thunder. Boom! Yeah. Blew my mind. Yeah. I wonder if that's why that. I hired him. Probably not. Mm, 
It might have been. I mean, definitely Will Ferrell being in it helped. <laughs> and but, him being funny. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Both of those are good things. But, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the, the race scenes are mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Yeah. They deal with a lot of sort of mental issues in terms of driving mm-hmm. and stress and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. This is actually, you know, probably the most legitimate version of a relationship Tom Cruise and Nicole mm. Kidman had on film. Far you, and you don't away. think Far and Away is legit? <laughs> I, I'm not a big Far and Away fan. Nor I think Eyes, Eyes Wide Shut might be the most realistic considering how much they it hate mirrored their other. life. <laughs> yes, in terms of their actual relationship, yes. perhaps. But the, as far as, yes, I agree with the most believable. I mean, she was still in the, you know, early er, early days of her acting oh, career. Totally, so she yeah. wasn't like a well-primped, you know, She wasn't always, the name brand yeah, at that point. exactly. And it's interesting because you also have sort of two villain so to speak mm-hmm. you have michael rooker who's a, is love, sort of love the rook. initial enemy on the track mm-hmm. but ultimately sort of becomes a friend yeah. and then you have carrie elwes who's the new new cat in town oh, carrie elwes much much sort of like there's a lot of similarities with talladega yeah. nights they basically... i mean talladega nights is probably I, I i bet they were like let's just do like hot shots did to top gun but did you know that it was not made for one academy award uh i did now yeah Best sound. I was that was gonna not be my not guess. not a big one, but Academy Award nominated Days of Thunder. Just keep that in your mind. Just think about that a little bit. Asterisk, small, very fine print in the bottom for sound. Yeah. Hey, you <laughs> didn't know, win. However, however, you, however you need to get it. Any way you can sell yeah. it up to those uh, producers, right? But talking about the world of Academy Award nominated mm-hmm. Tom Cruise projects, we immediately jump to A Few Good Men. Oh uh, yes. You know we have. Let's see. Which was when? Ninety two. Ninety two. I mean, he wasn't nominated personally for it, but you had Best Picture, mm. which is pretty impressive. Yeah. Sadly, Unforgiven beat it, so sorry. Sorry, Tom Cruise. And, you know, also Jack Nicholson was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Mm-hmm. Again, Gene Hackman, Unforgiven won. So yep. kind of stealing their proverbial thunder. Oh, oh, oh. Call back. Wah, wah. <laughs> also one of the more uh, misquoted lines in movie history, that you can't handle the truth. What's misquoted about it? It's uh, uh, it's It's like... You you want the truth, you can't handle the truth, isn't how it goes. It's like, uh, you want, uh, I forget. Oh, great. Now that I've brought that up, I can't remember. <laughs> See, because it's so misquoted. Literally, I can only remember the misquote. It's, it's, there's an extension to it, and it's not exactly said the way that people always do. I think there might be another line between the two oh, there's, lines. There's, there's a whole, or something. like, build-up, like, yeah. Yeah, it's... Interesting. One of the last good Rob Reiner films. Mm. I mean, he went on to make North after this. Before that, though, Stand By Me, When Harry Met Sally, Princess Bride, Misery... Kind of, Boom. kind of a good streak yeah. there. Sadly, did not continue. But you know, great story. Mm-hmm. Tom Cruise is a, a attorney, yeah. much like he goes on to do in the firm. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. hmm. Hmm. He's a, a military attorney in this place, right? Yes. yes. He and Matthew McConaughey really have the attorney <laughs> oh, role locked up. But yes, he <laughs> is a guy who is initially doesn't believe his clients. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, he kind of comes around on him, and he really gives it his best. He comes from a family who has a you know, history of being great mm-hmm. attorneys. And so he, he does one of the better attorney performances. I definitely, I mean, I like the firm, but I prefer this to the firm because yeah, this agree. is more of actual attorney work, whereas yeah. that's more of thriller work. Yeah. So, conspiracy. Yes. And got to note, James Marshall was one of the uh, clients, one of the, the uh, servicemen accused of the crime. Remember? He was in Gladiator, the Cuba Gooding Jr. boxing film. Uh. Boom. If you haven't checked that out, still recommending you check it out. <laughs> Gotta love a film with Warrant as its main soundtrack song. Oh, God. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Suck it in. Enjoy it. Anyway, probably the most significant part of Tom Cruise's career, I guess you could argue this, but it's probably at this point, probably the most significant, was... Ethan Hunt, mm. the star of Mission Impossible. Yes, turning into a full-blown action star. Yep, turning into a full-blown action star. This is probably mo- his most extensive franchise at this point yeah, with four films. Definitely. Probably his most successful yeah, franchise probably. at this point. And, you know, the first one is very different from the rest of them. It's and much more sort of thriller, mm-hmm. sort of mystery. And it's kind of average. Oh, I like it. I, th- I mean, I, it, it got nominated for a Razzie Awards, which I think was shocking. Like, I don't. worst written film grossing over $100 million. I mean, do you think it's bad enough to deserve a Razzie? I don't think it's that bad. Like, 
for how much people talk about how awesome they think it I was, like I think Impossible. people, I think, I think people who aren't fa already huge fans of the Mission Impossible franchise, who go back and watch it, everybody else, uh, <laughs> might, you know, in in a, in a similar to what I mentioned, you know, yesterday off screen about Adam Sandler and me liking Little Nicky. I probably, if I watch it again, will redact that statement. No, if I, I watch like this maybe again, I will. If like you it. watch the first Mission Impossible. Anybody yeah. but you might I think I even rewatched part of it at least this year. Ugh. If that doesn't... I think I think arguably Ugh. one I think of I saw the best. The theater. This might be oh. number two or three. Mm. Which well, I guess three out of four is not really much of an endorsement. <laughs> but... <laughs> Clearly number two is the bottom of the list, right? Please please tell me the second mission impossible. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, oh, okay, I'll give you that. At least we can agree on that much. I don't even hate that one though. I think that one has its charms. Yeah, few. It's a few, but not no. Yeah, it's charms in killing John Woo's American film career. <laughs> yeah, it didn't do a lot for him. That's no. true. But like this one, this one's sort of fun, you know. This is sort of the classic spy yeah, thrower, like true. who's dead, who's yeah. playing who. And know? I mean, it had to be. It at least was popular enough to make three more movies out of an old TV show. So it's not like it did. It was horribly received by this the is, public. I would say one of the last good Brian De Palma films. Mm. You know, he'd done Blowout, Scarface, Untouchables, mm -hmm. all before this. He's done things like Femme Fatale, Since This. Mm. <laughs> And, you know, I, I mean, I, I love the relationship between Ving Rhames mm. and Tom Cruise in this. I mm -hmm. wish they had continued that on into number four. I also think that, you know, regardless of my opinions of the film, Tom Cruise as an action star, I think, fits his acting more because I think he is... Not, that I, not to say I think Tom Cruise is a bad actor, but I think being a pretty boy or being a character, like a, a, a specific uh, intense character, outside of that, he doesn't have much acting range i think i think we will refute that soon enough my friend but i i i i, th I agree i think he he is very good as an action yeah. star i think he is probably underappreciated in regards to that yeah. i think you know he he's not talked about a lot but i mean for a guy who's like didn't start his career as an action star doing all of his own stunts as he grows older seems or most of his own stunts as he grows older seems like a pretty admirable thing, at least. Of, like, yeah, no, he's, you know. he's, he's, he's done, he's, he's solid as an action mm -hmm. star, so good on you for that, Tom mm -hmm. Cruise. This is the star of Beautiful. I personally wish you'd go more back to the more cerebral mystery Mission Impossibles, but you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. Ghost Protocol was pretty good too, so I can't criticize you for that. Maybe we'll see what happens with Five. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the probably most, oh, arguably the most famous mm. Tom Cruise part. That's a good question. Arguably. Top Gun. I, I might argue this is more uh, notable than Top Gun. We're talking Jerry Maguire, where he yeah. plays the title character. And Wait, was, he plays Jerry Maguire? He does. I didn't know that. Yep. Nominated for Best Actor. Boom. Did he win it? Uh, no. He then didn't screw know. him. He, screw you, Tom He Cruise. lost to Jeffrey Rush for Shine. <laughs> uh, and, mm. you know... Shine was good. I like Jeffrey Rush in it, but I think Tom Cruise is pretty phenomenal in this role. Like, it's sort of been played out. Well, yeah. People have made fun of oh, it. Yeah. So it's sort of like, you know, which goes Night to show at the that Roxbury it, and all that sort of stuff. Which period. goes to show, I mean, it must have, you know, been successful in the cultural eye if it was relevant enough culturally to be lampooned so many times. I think there are a few things about it that really sort of, in retrospect, hurt people's appreciation for it. Mm. A, Cuba Green Jr. getting so much notoriety like he's enjoyable yeah. he's good he's, he's very like, solid he's just a supporting actor yeah i mean he's not he's not his relationship with tom cruise is great in the movie i'll yeah. say that but you know he he was so big there for a while you know with yeah. the war and then he went on to do like boat trip or something so he kind of immediately <laughs> chill factor yeah. i know that oh, was up god there. yeah that's right also uh, um that the one kid. with the dogs yes yeah, snow dogs yeah. no no snow dogs with paul walker that's Paul Walker. Was it Sled Dogs? Something like that. Something. <laughs> no, that was Eight Below. Oh, yeah. I think it was Snow Dogs. <laughs> but, like, you know, matter. then Jonathan Limp Limpnicki. Yeah. Like, that kid got so much notoriety for being in the film, and I think I that sort of turned off a lot of people. And then even Renee Zellweger kind of, mm -hmm. kind of turned people off of the film. But Tom Cruise, I think, is totally totally solid in the film mm -hmm. like he is not the problem like no, i think true. other people are dragging him down even though i don't i don't think they are dragging him down i think people feel like they're dragging uh, yeah. him down or at least dragging the project down and because that gets dragged down yeah. they then 
think of him because he's so recognizable yeah. in the project. And understandably, he is. It, it, I feel like it's also kind of one of those projects where, as weird as this might sound to say, he is actually so good at what he does that it lowers, I think, the other actors. Yeah. I think people are like, wow, Tom Cruise, you're really good. And then they cut to Renee Zellweger not being horrible, but not acting her ass off like Tom Cruise was, and then you're like, oh, eh. yeah. And I think that might take I, people out of it. I, th I mean, I think she was good. I think I think Cuba Gooding Jr. was good. I think I mean everyone's good. Kelly Preston was great as his like ex. You know, there it's. I think it's a very good film. It was not made for Best Picture. Lost to the English Patient, which I think you know. I'm not saying it should have won that year, but I'm saying that English Patient probably shouldn't have won. And see, and you know, the English Patient just goes to you know support my argument that just because something's nominated and wins best picture doesn't mean it's good i don't think anyone would argue with that point yeah well i'm just saying you bring it up that this got best picture nomination doesn't mean it's good i'm just I'm, <laughs> that, that is a fair that's a fair argument i'm just saying you know to be fair on the other no, side it's true it's true it, if, if you look at those two in retrospect i think jerry Maguire is probably more enjoyable mm. than the english patient i would agree with you so that's all I'm saying. And in terms of refuti with a pulse, with <laughs> refuting your argument again about acting, Magnolia, oh, which you okay. want to bring up, yeah, Paul Thomas yeah, Anderson. Yeah. You, know, you know, this is a little inter intersecting <laughs> Only my favorite Tom Cruise role yeah. ever. A little whatever. intersecting story that I believe he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor in. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, why don't you tell me about how he's not a good actor now? <laughs> Come on. Well, I'm okay. Waiting. He plays uh, the character that I always assume he is outside of a off douche. camera. So basically, he's not acting. I think he's being Tom Cruise in that movie. Boom! Refuted. Snap. <laughs> Do you hate on Michael Sarah for being so awesome as an awkward, nerdy kid? Do I hate on him for yeah. it? Sometimes. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't he's think just so. looking for holes, yeah. Spencer. There are no, tons of holes. Magnolia, uh, he's amazing in Magnolia. But Magnolia is also an incredibly good movie, in my opinion. Yep. I know a lot of people have problems with the ending, but I really enjoy a lot about that movie. It's probably oh, the first great. movie that made me that can consistently make me cry in quite a long time. There are probably argue you could argue a few people who deserve supporting oh, yeah. nominations in that film. Old Seymour Hoffman. Yep. Definitely. Um, I would almost say I would say John C. Riley. Yeah, I would say John C. Riley. I don't know if I would go so far with Julianne Moore because my relationship with her is kind of tumultuous. But um, <laughs> there's a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, the kid, whoever the the small boy, whatever his name was, I forget mm, that. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, there's really interesting story if you haven't seen it about people, various people. Yes, William. Oh God, yes, Quid Kid Donnie Smith. Yeah, such a. I mean, I still say I've got a love, lot of love to give, and I just don't know where to put it whenever I'm frustrating my wife. Um, but great mixture of characters, weird stories that all convolute in one point. Tom Cruise plays a male self-help uh, speaker who's mm -hmm. very like chauvinistic. Yes, that's his, his that's his shtick. Yeah, his like uh, I think his byline is uh, respect the cock, tame the cunt. Yeah. Yeah, so right to that, right straight to that women's lib, just right in the face. To be fair, he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. He lost to Michael Caine for Cider House Rules. I like Cider House Rules fairly, but I think you could argue that he was better than Michael Caine in Cider, Cider House Rules. Like, Cider, Michael Caine in Cider House Rules is Michael Caine doing another act, good acting role. In my, well, doing another good Michael Caine acting role. When Tom Cruise in Magnolia is Tom Cruise playing a character that's so unlike the roles he plays and is so believable. That is why he's I so think he's, he's so intense. Like Cedar House rules. Like Michael Caine is kind of vanilla, if you ask yeah. me. Like no, he's, he, I like I like him. Mm -hmm. I like the film, all right. But I don't. I mean, I don't. When I think great Michael Caine roles, that does not pop yeah. to my mind. So. And hands down, this movie has probably one of the most, uh, for me at least, one of the most believable tough guy who cries moments with Tom Cruise. When he mm -hmm. finally breaks down, He's li you literally see his character uh, overflowing with rage at the fact that he's not able to stop his tears from coming out. And I think that's something that a lot of I think of you gotta give respect. Tom Cruise credit. He's a good crier on camera. Like, yeah. there's some of that going on like, Jerry Maguire that's and stuff, true, yeah. too. Like, he, yeah. does, he does crying well. Yeah. Like, he's got, like, eyes that, like, do crying well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's being punched in the nuts when when he cries. A lot of yeah. people have that grimace of just the... Yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to this Friday, the 15th, I believe mm -hmm. we settled yes. upon. Yes, 15th. Yeah, yeah, it's 15th. <laughs> I feel like that's... Yeah, we'll go 15th. It is, because right. I'm, I'm, I'm going camping this weekend. I right. have Monday the 18th off. All right. 
Good. See, so Thank I know you. that. Thank 17, you. 16, 15. Anyway, Rock of Ages. This is based <laughs> upon the Broadway play That's by right. Chris Derencio. Okay. Derenzo. Uh, Derenzi. Derenzo. We'll go with some one of those three. We'll go with Darienso. Darienso. I haven't even seen how it's spelled. I'm just going to um, say that. that this is a play that eventually was a Broadway production mm-hmm. since toured the country. Yes. It's about a small town girl <laughs> and a city boy <laughs> who uh, meet on the sunset <laughs> strip <laughs> while pursuing their Hollywood dreams. You know, I'm trying to get into the theme. It's a musical. What can I say? <laughs> it's true. It is. It is. So we know you'll be there, right? Opening yeah. day, oh, midnight yeah. showing, yeah. lined up with your. Uh, I've got like the first four showing. With your breakaway pants yeah. on and everything yeah. and your 80s hair. <laughs> so let's see. We got Julian Howe, Ho, Huff, Huff, whatever, the Dancing with the Stars girl who's oh, yes. dating Ryan Seacrest. She's in it. <laughs> you got, you, I mean, you got tons of amazing people in it. Brian Cranston, Charlie's Theron, or sorry, Catherine Zeta Jones. Mm. Charlie's Theron, Catherine Zeta Jones. Sort of similar name. <laughs> Paul Giamatti, Russell Brand, Tom Cruise. I mean, it's got Alec a great. Alec Baldwin. Right. It's got a great, great cast. I just don't like musicals for me. I just me. don't care about 80s butt rock. And so it's like you combine... Uh, I'm iffy on musicals in the first place. I do not like 80s butt rock. And 80s butt rock, I became a star when I wasn't before stories, a la, what was it, Rockstar with Mark mm, Wahlberg? Yep. Completely don't interest me. So this is like the on- the only thing... Literally, the only thing that interests me about this movie is the one thing that will make you never see it, which is the fact that it's a musical. Just because I'm interested to see if anything, what people do with musicals. I, I, I kind of I do like some 80s rock, I'll admit it. Like Bon Jovi. They talk about Bon Jovi here. Journey. I'm a down with Journey. You know, Pat Benatar, <sighs> Twisted Sister, Steve Perry, Poison, Europe. Not really selling me on it, but I like me some Bon Jovi and I like some Journey. Mm. And some, a little bit of Sticks, too. Mm. A little bit. A little bit. So, that being there... If anything, slightly intrigues me. Yeah. But, like, I don't know what's more, if the, going to do some yeah. karaoke is any more appealing than <laughs> yeah. going to see his movie. And he plays, what, like, the big star? Yes, Tom he Cruise, plays, like, like a rock star. crazy rock star or yeah. something that everybody wants to fuck or something. Be around, yeah. yeah. It's it's one of those films that, you know, if you like musicals, it's probably good. I mean, it's directed it, by, what's his name? Adam Shankman, who did Hairspray. Okay. And which was hugely popular yeah. musical. And I mean, you know, it's like, it's obviously a popular musical in the first place, considering it got to Broadway, so it's not, and it's best-selling and all over the place. So, I mean, clearly the source material's there, but, you know, it's not always just a direct success, when you, when, i.e. Mamma Mia, when you take a successful play and you turn it into a movie. That doesn't mean the movie is going to be good, just because. To be it's fair, different, somewhat different Mamma Mia made a ton of money. That doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, some people might argue that it was good uh, yeah, because a lot of people really seem to like that movie. Yeah, and then I'm, the I fact that Glee exists means clearly people like things like that. So I'm, I, I don't want to be the one arguing in favor of musicals if that's the position we're putting me in. Like this is very, I think it is. I this think, is very peculiar. I think, is, I think you're defending musicals to me, Spencer. <laughs> Maybe I'm coming around. I don't know. When it comes to money, though, we can always toss our opinions to the side and say people do this for dollars. Because honestly, that's a driving force probably more times than we care to admit in Hollywood. To be fair, also of note, I believe Tom Cruise sings his own stuff in the movie. So I'm curious. I a little, bad. I'm a little curious. I believe they Not released the movie, some of the soundtrack sing. stuff that he sang uh, yeah. already. So anyway, auto tuned maybe. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> but let us know your thoughts um, and join us next week for our DVD picks for the week of June 19th. Mm-hmm. See how you see how you did Adding that? Adding the math. You added one to 18, yeah. which was Monday. No, I went 12 plus 7. That's uh, how I got there. Even weirder. But that would have been a good way, too. <laughs> and let us know your thoughts on MacGuffinPodcast.com, mm-hmm. com slash MacGuffinCast. you like that MacGuffin Podcast slash. We'll uh, X's now. <laughs> either side, depending <laughs> on mirrored or not. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. <laughs> Phone number 323-761-9842. Mm-hmm. iTunes, Blip. Miro, Roku, Get Glue. <laughs> Join us Get next sticky time. with Get Glue. I'm still trying to pimp that. I don't want that slogan anywhere near <laughs> I me. I would join Get Glue if that was their slogan. I think I would. I Maybe think I would have legitimately. Check. Maybe it is their slogan. If it I is, I'm funny. joining tonight. If it is, you'll, you'll, next time we film, I'll be like, I am now a Get Glue fan because Get Sticky. <laughs> Let's not get sticky with Greg. How about that? <laughs> See you next time.
2000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side. Mr. Tonight. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.